Hey guys, and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea, and I hope that I find you all very well indeed. Or if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you also. Right guys, well this is the third instalment of my festive food ideas. This is going to be the Christmas Sherry Trifle. Now we have a trifle every single year in this house. Sometimes I make it with sherry and sometimes I don't. But I'm going to be showing you the sherry version tonight just because it's the most traditional. It's absolutely delicious. I mean the combination of the, the berry jelly, the cream, the custard, the sponge and even the sherry it just goes together so so well and it's so traditional in this country. I mean I think you'll probably find 90% of people will be having trifle <laughs> at some point over Christmas or the new year. Your quantities will vary slightly. You know, it'll depend how much cream you want, how much custard you want, how much sherry you want. But I'm going to show you what I'm using, just in case you want to follow along with my wee particular recipe. So first of all, I'm using one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm using 100 grams of castor sugar, 400 grams of Scottish berries. That's 200 grams of raspberries and 200 grams of strawberries. I'm using 500 ml of cold water, 500 ml of double cream. I'm using 300 100 grams of Madeira cake. You can use shop bought or make your own, it makes no difference. I'm also using 400 ml of custard. Again, you can use shop bought or make your own, it makes no difference. I'm also using two tablespoons of castor sugar and I'm also going to be using a good handful of flaked almonds for the top. You don't have to use flaked almonds, you can use pistachios, something like that. I mean, you can toast your almonds as well if you like. And you're also going to need four or five gelatin sheets. And that's it. So let's move on and we'll see what we do next. The first thing you want to do guys is get your gelatin into a bowl of cold water just to soak and it's just going to go from looking like hard plastic to, you know, it's going to be all malleable and soft. So just pop that into the bowl and set it to the side until you're ready for it. Next thing you want to do is start to cut your cake up. You can either slice this or you can crumb, you know, you can put it into a fine crumb. It's entirely up to you. I usually just prefer to slice mine. Sometimes I just do it, you know, in squares, but today I'm going to be using my wee cookie cutter to get it into circles to stick to the side of my bowl. So I just go straight down the middle of the loaf and then straight down lengthways, and this will give me four equal pieces. I like using Madeira cake because it's a lovely, dense cake. But you could also use something like, you know, a Victoria sponge or something as well if you prefer. Like I say, much of this recipe, guys, is down to personal taste. This is just the way I do it. But feel free to adjust it to suit yourself. It's a very forgiving recipe. You can't really go wrong. It's not like baking. You know, you, you, can't, you really can't go wrong with this. And then I'm just going to go through these four again to give me eight. I might not use the eight, but I've got them if I need them. And like I say, you know, don't, don't chuck your, your scraps away. Keep your scraps because they go fab with some nice warm custard. Then what I like to do is, I don't like to add the sherry directly to my sponge. I like to put a wee splash in the bottom of my bowl and just sort of swirl it round in the bowl and up the sides. Just to sort of coat my glass. And then I start to pop my sponges in and the sponge will absorb that liquid from the sides. It actually helps, you know, to stick your sponge to the sides of the bowl. And that will just infuse your sponge with a lovely mild sherry flavour. You can use as much sherry as you like, guys. Some people drown their sponges in sherry. But I'm not looking to get drunk <laughs> whilst having my Christmas dessert. So I just put a wee splash in. I've used about two tablespoons. But feel free to use as much as you like. So now you're going to move on and start your jelly. So into a pan you want to put your water in. So that's 500 mils of cold water and bring it up to a simmer. Add your frozen berries. Did I mention these were frozen? Yeah, these are frozen. <laughs> and then pop your castor sugar in, that's 100 grams. 
and just bring it back to a simmer. The reason I use frozen berries and not fresh because they break down a lot quicker and a lot faster. And that's why. So give them a simmer for about five minutes. You're looking to really soften these up. The smell was amazing, so fruity. And then you want to dig out some of your fruit and set that to the side. Because we're going to pop this into our sponge in a wee while. So you don't want it broken down too much. You want there to be a bit of texture there. So about, lift about half of it out and leave half of it in the pan. And then you can turn your heat off and mash the remainder of your fruit with a hand masher or a blender if you prefer. This is going to be getting put through a sieve in a wee minute so it's just to help it go through the sieve. It just goes through a bit easier if it's mashed up a bit smaller. So then we're going to move over to the sieve and pour your hot liquid into your sieve. Honest, honestly guys, the smell was amazing. It was like hot jam. And then you're going to take a big spoon or a ladle and gently push that through to get all the juice out. And you're going to have quite a few seeds left and some skin and some pulp and you're just going to discard that. Just throw that into the bin once you've got all your juice out. This is going to be the base of your jelly. And again, guys, you can just, you know, you can get a shop made jelly if you prefer, you know, that one where you just add water and that's it, basically. But I like to do this just at Christmas. It's, you know, there's a world of difference. There really is. For that wee bit more effort, it's, it's just outstanding. Beautiful. And while it's still piping warm, you want to pop your gelatin in. Now these will dissolve more or less straight away, so you don't have to stand and stir for 20 hours the way you do with the, you know, the other, the other stuff. So once you've popped them in, just give them a good whisk round with a fork, just to make sure. They should be dissolved, but just to make sure. And they're actually dissolved already. As you can see, there's nothing Nothing there. And we're going to pop back over to our sponges. And give your bottom one a good press down and sort of break it up a wee bit because what's going to happen is when you pour your jelly on top of this, that middle sponge is going to rise up and mix into your jelly and that's what you want. So it's going to go lovely and thick. It's going to give you a lovely texture. So first thing you want to do is pop the fruit that you took out of your mixture into the bottom, just so that everybody gets a wee bit of fruit and it's not just jelly. And on top of that, you want to slowly add your warm jelly liquid. Like I say, that bottom sponge is going to come up and mix in with your jelly and it's going to give you a wonderful contrast and, you know, in texture between the jelly and the sponge. Your other sponges will just remain stuck to the side of the bowl because they've got the sherry holding them on. <laughs> and that's it. So you just want to pop this into a fridge, guys, and let it set. Probably take about two or three hours to set properly because the next thing you're going to do is put your custard on. So if it's not set properly, your custard is just going to, you know, it's going to fall straight through your mixture, which obviously you don't want. So I'd give it enough time to set, guys. Like I said, probably take two or three hours. So this was me about two and a half hours later, and mine's a set. So what you want to do is you want to warm your custard up and let it cool down. You want it still warm though, because as it cools, it's going to create a nice sort of thick film on top. And you need that film on top to support the cream that you're going to put on next. You don't want it to be boiling hot, but you want there to be a bit of heat in that so that when it cools down, you'll get a nice thick film on the top. 
So pop it back into the fridge, allow it to cool and it'll develop a skin. And that's going to be the barrier for your cream. So whilst that's doing its thing, you can go on with your cream topping. So pop in 500 ml of double cream into a bowl. This is heavy cream or double cream, depending on whereabouts in the world you're from. And then pop in a teaspoon of vanilla extract or vanilla essence. And then two tablespoons of icing sugar. I think it's also known as confectioner's sugar. And then you can get in there with a hand whisk or a hand blender. I'm just using a hand blender. And keep going till it's nice and thick. Probably take about 30 seconds. It wouldn't take long. But it'll go from runny to thick very quickly. But you don't want to overdo it. You don't want it too stiff. This is perfect. Because you are going to be spreading it over your, your um, custard. So you don't want it like concrete. Something like this is ideal, just so that when you stir it around, it holds its shape. And you can just pop that into the fridge until you're ready to use it, or basically until your custard is set. So this is my custard now set. It's been in the fridge for about an hour. So I'm just going to pop my cream on top, and as you can see, you know, it's not too stiff. So I'm just pushing that to the edges of the bowl and covering my custard. So I just like to do a nice smooth layer. You can put this on however you like. And then pop it into the fridge again for 30 minutes just to firm up a wee bit more. And this is me half an hour later. And I'm just going to do some wee blobs. <laughs> some wee blobs round the outside. And I'm going to pop some strawberries in the middle and some flaked almonds round the sides and over the top of the strawberries. Flaked almonds and cream are a match made in heaven, so they are. I like to put quite a lot of flaked almonds on, but again, it's up to you how many you use or whether you use them at all. Like I said, I'm just showing you how I like to do it. Sometimes I do individual ones, but I'm doing just the one big one tonight. And that was it, that's it done. And I think it looks oh so pretty and perfect for Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, I'm actually going to be doing individual ones, you know, and individual dessert glasses, but tonight I've just done a biggie. And as you can see, the nice layers there, the cream and the strawberries, oh, this was absolutely beautiful. It really was. It went down a treat. So that was it, guys, and I hope you enjoyed that. So coming up tomorrow, I've got a wee recipe for mulled wine, and it's that again, that's just lovely for this time of the year. Such a festive drink, and it's lovely and warming, you know, and of all these cold winter nights that we've got coming up, and all these cold and dreary winter nights. <laughs> I love the winter anyway, so I mean, I really don't mind, but... So hope, hopefully you'll um, pop back and, and join us for that one. So like I say, that'll be going up tomorrow, probably about 7 or 8 o'clock at night. So after I've made it and after we've had it and all that sort of good stuff. So thank you very much again, guys, for popping over and seeing what's going on. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you then. Bye for now. Bye now.